Hey, you! Me. Yes, you. Do you love playing as the tank? Do you like soaking an ungodly amount of damage while simultaneously dishing out an amount of daka worthy of the average orc? Do you love playing as the big slow guy on the team? Do you love rapid firing large caliber guns? Well, say no more because the Bastion class is the perfect choice for you. Being one of the three classes available to players in Starship Troopers Extermination, the Bastion is a damage dealing armored meat wall of a human. Possessing the deadly Morita Mark III saw as their signature weapon, decked in heavy armor and equipped with a special ability designed to turn them into a living turret, a properly supported Bastion is difficult to put down even as it's beset by dozens of bugs from all sides. However, despite all of their survivability, equipment, and skills, a Bastion is hardly invincible. There are various weaknesses and drawbacks that will make a lone Bastion sitting ducks due to being mobbed without being able to properly retaliate. In this video, I will articulate the main strengths and weaknesses of a Bastion, a way for Bastion to maximize their potential and become the best tank meat wall the Federation has ever seen. As a side note however, none of the things I will put forth in this video will be completely authoritative and should only be treated as a suggestion rather than a foolproof guide as it is based on my own experience as a Bastion main. Also, most of the recommendations in this video pertains mostly to veteran mode gameplays. In easy and normal, the game is lax enough that you can easily get away with any kind of playstyle. First off, let's start with a brief description of the Bastion, their equipment, their perks, and their special traits. As mentioned before, the Bastion is geared for two things, swallowing damage from bugs and belching them out in return. Bastions wear thicker armor than both hunters and operators, represented by their heavy armor special ability. Thus, they can survive more attacks than the other two classes. Even in veteran mode and with mutators active, a Bastion can still shrug off multiple attacks before going down. This survivability is further improved by their second special ability, Siege Mode. Siege Mode roots a Bastion in one spot, dramatically improving their defensive capabilities and increasing their weapon stability, the latter being especially important for the Morita Mark III Saw, the Bastion's signature weapon. The Morita Mark III is best described as a portable machine gun. It's big, it belches out lead like it's nothing, and it can mow down large waves of bugs. Outside of siege mode, however, its aim is horrendous, and you likely won't hit anything smaller than an entire mountain. Its range is also quite short, consigning it as a short range burst weapon. Furthermore, while its magazine contains a large amount of bullets per magazine, sustained fire will quickly deplete your reserve, forcing you to reload for a few seconds. This will be covered more in detail later in the video, as recognizing when to stop firing and afford the seconds long reload can be very important in higher difficulties. As for secondaries, the Bastion shares their loadout with all the other classes, the Emancipator and the Peacemaker. Not if you here, they do their job in a pin. For perks and utilities, the Bastion shared most of their loadouts with other classes. Exceptions include the Proximity Bug Mine Utility, which only the Bastion have access to. When it comes to blunting a bug horde, no other class does it better than Bastion's arm with a saw parked somewhere where they can easily fire into the onrushing wave while the bugs spawn at them rather than squishy tiny hunters and operators. The improved ability of Siege Boat makes them able to even neutralize distant target to an extent while also shrugging off return fire from gunner bugs. The Shock Beacon, available to the Bastion as well as the Hunter, works perfectly with the Bastion's brand of defensive fighting as the stunning effect allows them to pick off stationary bugs with sweeping fire. Combined with the Morita's inherent staggering effect, a Bastion can quickly break a bug vanguard and allow other classes to pick off the bugs easily. Kill Beacons allow the Bastion to keep fighting and recovering from damage even as they face particularly large hordes. A properly supported Bastion is much tougher and more effective than the walls of a base due to these reasons, and a group of Bastion with proper support and positioning will be able to break away from bugs quickly. However, the stalwart nature of a Bastion is also their greatest weakness. A strong Bastion is a stationary Bastion. Moving around significantly cuts the amount of damage a Bastion can dish off or take owing to the general inaccuracy of the saw and the lack of siege mode's defensive capabilities. In addition, 
Even inside siege mode, the saw doesn't fully permit the ability to engage distant target. This means a gunner buck that is hidden well behind the melee bugs can sometimes snipe bastion without them being able to fight back. And of course, grenadiers can easily obliterate a bastion with a direct hit, even with siege mode up and defensive perks used. Another weakness of the saw is the fairly long reload process, taking several seconds to finish the animation. While this seems minor, that few seconds can mean a few seconds of not stopping the bug from reaching you and tearing you apart sooner. Improper timing of reloads can end poorly in more difficult rounds and in more uncoordinated teams. Now you might be thinking, for the former, why not use the Mark 1 Carbine? That is a valid choice for a Bastion. The Carbine is still a solid weapon that can take down bugs while retaining accuracy on the move. However, in my experience, the Carbine's lack of firepower relative to the saw alongside its fewer ammo count works to its detriment when doing the Bastion's main job of taking down as many bugs as possible. In addition, the Carbine noticeably suffers when bringing down larger bugs like Tigers and Grenadiers, which in the situations where mutators allow more spawn of these bugs can be quite detrimental. Thus, the Carbine is less a solution and more an alternative that trades one weakness for another. Furthermore, positioning is key for a Bastion. If you deploy and dismiss Siege Mode rapidly, you will have to wait 30 seconds until you can do it again. This can and will heavily affect your ability to properly defend a section of the base. Outside of Siege Mode, even with the Bastion's innate durability added with perks, a Tiger can quite easily munch a Bastion without batting an eye, more so when there's a flood of bugs alongside it. Therefore, if you pick a spot where you're unable to properly do your job of spraying a bug horde with holy bullets, then there's a 30 second gap where you cannot do your job efficiently, which can lead into the collapse of an entire sector if done in a particularly bad situation. In summary, the Bastion is strong but hardly invincible. It can put up serious damage and withstand large amount of beatings but can only do so when there's proper support surrounding them and if they're able to secure a position that's both protected and allows for sweeping fire against bugs. This is especially paramount in Vertron Horde mode, where a slight misstep in higher wave can mean a massive breach and the loss of the mobile base. While there are no truly meta approaches to playing as Bastion, there are some habits that can be picked up that will help you maximize your potential. Again, these aren't mandatory items, only things that I think can help you in your journey. The list of good habits are Number 1. Keep track of your magazine count and keep situational awareness at all costs. Number 2. Learn to recognize ideal defending spots. Number 3. Coordinate with the hunters to take down backside enemies. Don't go off running by yourself. Number 4. Focus on hitting as many bugs as possible to stagger them. Number 5. Learn to set up effective shock fences. Number 6. Learn to recognize when to deploy or not to deploy. And number 7. Recognize losing battles and retreat when necessary. Now these sounds like no-brainers, but at times you might get carried away by the heat of the battle or tempted to be one-man heroes or brazenly redeploy attempting to help what looks like a sagging fraud while yours is seemingly empty. Do not, I repeat, do not immediately jump into doing such actions. That would only weaken your own front and potentially allow a breach to develop. Use the in-game voice chat to point off breaches and let hunters and operators plug the gap. If your front is sufficiently quiet, then you can go off and help out. Use the ping function in conjunction with voice chat to give hunters priority targets in the back rear line so that they may deal with the problem while you focus on the grunts. This may be stating the obvious, but this is after all a team game with the built-in voice chat functionality. Using it will help your team massively in the long run. For reloading, creating an opening for yourself in order to do so is possible with the usage of grenades. Napalm in particular can give you enough reading room to reload and rearm the saw and then some with its 60 seconds burning time. It can even allow you to rapidly redeploy, go back to base, and plunk yourself again on the same spot. However, if you're in a very tight spot, don't hesitate to immediately use the grenade as a distraction so you can quickly move into a more advantageous spot. By the time the horde appears, 
it's imperative to keep yourself alive as long as possible, as every second of you staying up means more dead bugs. Again, you're tough but not invincible, do not overcommit to a crumbling front and don't hesitate to retweet and regroup with other players. For siege mode, always survey the base or the area you're defending. Top of the walls, more often than not, can be hazardous for a bastion as grenadiers or an overflowing horde can bring it down and shake you off the mode, sentencing you to an almost certain death by bug stab wounds. For me, the ideal location is just outside the walls on the ground. That way, you can attract bugs into yourself, reducing damage taken to walls. When in situation where you're not in the base, such as escorting gas or ore runs, a spot where you can see and fire in all directions and situation on a slightly elevated platform is preferable. This mostly falls to your own discretion to determine which spots fit the critite criteria, so I won't put up an example. As long as they're fulfilled in some capacity, then you're good to go. Don't forget to set up shock fences in front or around you, as long as it's able to stun as many bugs as possible for you and your team to take down. To stagger as many bugs as possible, firing in wide sweeping arcs rather than focusing on singular bugs might be preferable. While this does somewhat reduce the amount of bugs that you directly kill, it does leave them vulnerable to fire from other people in the team. This is, again, mostly down to preference or whether you want to kill them directly or let them be destroyed by supporting fire. The presence of a second bastion can mitigate this by having one firing in an arc and the other focus firing the staggered bugs. Overall, the crux of these tips is a general sense of awareness for your surroundings. Always be on guard, always check and recheck, and always coordinate in teammates on dealing with the horde. Don't be shy to use voice chat and communicate with other people. In conclusion, Bastion is a very powerful class with some very big weaknesses. Preparation, timing, and teamwork are all necessary to bring out the best of the Bastion's abilities. With the right combination of all three factors, a Bastion can handily protect their teammates while also providing suppressing fires. The advice I give in this video isn't necessary to be a competent Bastion, but it can prove to be quite useful in many situations. Now that you know some additional tricks to start up your sleeve, go out there and prove yourself worthy of a citizenship by being the greatest, bestest living siege world in this side of the federation. And if you're interested in more videos like this, please leave a like and subscribe. Every one of them is another bug killed in the name of our glorious federation. I am Pontificate Artok and I bid you all farewell. Goodbye!